valley and mountain, river and plain, through wind and storm, rides Anne of the Airlane. Jack Baker and the two diamond smugglers, Vic and Joe, have landed on the island of Trinidad just off the coast of Venezuela, South America, to investigate what they believe might be a fire in the baggage compartment of the transport ship. To their amazement, they find our heroine, Ann Burton, stowed away in the ship, and what they thought to be smoke was only face powder from her compact, which had fallen. Vic decides to send Ann back to Springfield by tramp steamer, so she will be out of communication with her friends for as long as possible. But just as they are about to start the motors, it is noticed that the huge transport has settled down in some sort of black, sticky substance and seems to be in danger of being engulfed. Is this some sort of a trap set for the natives, or has the plane settled in a bed of quicksand? The tropical moon shines with almost the brilliance of day, so we'll have no trouble finding the answer. I can't make head or tail of what those guys are saying. Can you make it out, Baker? No, I'm sorry, Morgan. I know a smattering of Spanish and a bit of Indian, but their language doesn't seem to be either. Well, Joe didn't seem to have any trouble telling them to bring mules. Evidently, he knows how to talk to them. See, he's having them hitch onto the tail right now. Yeah, and the boys seem to understand what he's talking about. Hey, Joe, come here. What do you want, Vic? Okay, make it short, because this ship's settling pretty fast. Hey, what kind of lingo was that you're talking to those natives? Indian? Yes, Indian. I just happen to know a little of it. I gotta get over there and get them pulling this thing out. Go ahead, Joe. We can talk about languages later. Well, I've heard a little Indian language and quite a few dialects at that, but I'm sure that I never heard anything like that. It sounds like a lot of hissing. Say, that's it. I've got it now. That is Indian, all right, but not the kind of Indian that we know about. You mean it's some sort of Aztec dialect, Jack? No, Anne, it's East Indian, you know, from India. Say, Baker, what do you think we are? This is South America. That is nearly. You mean West Indian, don't you? No, Morgan, I mean just what I said, East Indian. There's no other language in the world that sounds like that of India. It's distinguished by that hissing sound, as you call it. But I don't understand, Jack. How did the East Indians get over here? Is it a settlement or something? Well, you see, this island of Trinidad belongs to Great Britain. Yes. And the East Indians were brought over here to work. Say, oh. that explains why we're stuck here. Why didn't I think of that before? Hey, what are you doing, Baker? Trying to talk in riddles? No, I mean that stuff that the ship's settling in. We sure are lucky that I didn't happen to hit it out there in the middle. And in this moonlight, it sure would have been possible. Jack, if you don't mind explaining, we'd like to get in on the secret, too. <laughs> sure, Anne. There's no secret about it at all. This is the famous Asphalt Lake of the Trinidad. It's sometimes known as the Lake of Pitch. Asphalt? You don't mean the stuff that they pave streets with, do you? That's it, exactly. This lake here is three miles around and roughly about a mile across. And we just happened by a stroke of luck to land on the edge so that our landing gear just struck it. Oh, then that's what stopped the ship like it had hit a wall. I thought that we'd hit a mountain the way those boxes and crates in that baggage compartment came tumbling around me. It's sure funny the wheels didn't go right down when we stopped. No, it's fairly hard underneath right around the edges here. But out there in the middle, it's always bubbling up. Shipping this stuff out of here is quite an industry. Then where are the people that work here? All we saw were those natives, if that's what they are. Now, this is probably just one of the little settlements of workers. I think those dark buildings way over there are part of the works, which means that the highway is on the other side of the lake from us. Oh, but it looks like Joe's got the boys all lined up and is about ready to pull. About ready, Joe? Yes. we got 12 mules hitched on, and that ought to be able to pull anything. Give me a hand over here, sort of steering this tail, will you, Vic? I guess so. Come on, Baker. Let's see if we can get this thing out. Maybe Jack better get into the cabin and watch the controls. 
just to see that we don't strain anything back here. That's a good idea. And you better get in there with them, beautiful. It'll keep you from getting any ideas about wandering off and maybe trying to find your way into that village or town, whatever it is. Okay, Morgan, I'll watch the controls. And be ready to stop those drivers if I shout. We can't afford to be grounded here. Come on, Ann. All right. Now I'll open this shield a bit so they can hear me back there. Okay, Joe, take it easy. That pitch is mighty sticky. Do you think they'll be able to make it, Jack? I think so, Ann. Once they get it sort of broken loose, those mules won't have much trouble pulling us out. Uh, oh, there. I don't know. I didn't make it that time. Jack, this would be a good time to see if you can contact headquarters. Vic and Joe won't be able to hear anything out there with those native boys shouting and all that racket. Say, that's an idea. Let's see. What was that frequency? I think it was... Oh, I got it. Here on this handkerchief you gave me back oh, in the yes, Everglades. I remember. Oh, and there. Now, that's it. Now, you watch out there to see that they don't open that cabin door, and I'll call. They're both back there at the tail. Okay. Baker calling D-12. Baker calling D-12. D-12, answering Baker. Where are you, Baker? On island of Trinidad near Venezuela. Was fire in compartment serious, Baker? No fire in compartment, D-12. Did you know Ann Burton is in baggage compartment, Baker? Found her on landing. Morgan plans her to take to St. Roque and send her back by tramp steamer to delay communication. Where are Morgan and Tolliver now, close to you? We're stuck in Asphalt Lake. They're both helping natives pull us out, but I don't think we'll be damaged. Fine. How is transport holding out? I'm working like a clock. Everything ship shaped so far. We have added your co-pilot Peterson and hostess Kay Thompson to our operatives. Also a new member who is familiar with territory near Diamond Mines, equipping their ship with new radio. Their call is D-4-6. D-4-6. Get that? Their call is D-4-6. And your call will be D-3-1. D-3-1. Right. Keep headphones on and switch to this frequency whenever you can do it safely. Oh, we're moving. We'll be out in a minute. We'll have to sign off. Okay, D-3-1. We'll be on duty 24 hours a day. Call when you can and advise of progress. That's all. Okay, D-12. Pete and Kay, they're going to help us. But I wonder who the new member is. Well, probably some Secret Service man that's been on this case for some time. We seem to be moving slowly but surely. Hope they don't strain the tailpiece. Jack, we seem to be on solid ground. Well, that makes everything all right, all the way around. We're all right, and that message from headquarters tells me that Kay and Pete and Bobby and your Aunt Hattie, they all seem to have arrived safely. Poor Aunt Hattie, I'll bet she's worried. Mm. Shh, must be Vic. Everything okay, Baker? Controls seem to be all right, Morgan, but we'll have to have a look around. Can't tell what might be wrong with the tail assembly or the landing gear. I'll have a look. C come on, Aunt. Jump. Right, thanks, Jack. Where's Joe? He went back with those mule drivers. Seems like you have to pay the head man, whoever that is. Hand me your flashlight, will you, Morgan? Hmm. Doesn't seem to be anything wrong with the tail assembly. That landing gear, I don't like the looks of that. Ooh, it's all covered with that sticky black stuff. Do you think those wheels will turn, Jack? I think we'd better take off. That stuff will come off that gear when the wind hits it. Oh, it might at that. We'll leave the gear down for a while. But where are you going to take off? You can't take a chance on crossing that pitch again. Well, I'll say we're not. But that clearing right down there that way, that looks all right. There's not a breath of air stirring, so wind direction doesn't make any difference. Well, I suppose I'll have to go and bring Joe back again. Time means nothing to him when he gets to talking. Say, that reminds me. Just where did Joey Tolliver learn to talk to those guys, huh? You say they're East Indians? He's never been farther east than New York. It might be that he picked it up from some friend or something like that. Yeah, maybe, but there's something fishy about that. He's too dumb to learn a language that well. Like he did tonight. We just picked it up someplace. I'd know, know what it was all about. Well, you might ask him. Here he comes. I'll say I will. Well, Joey, I suppose that you handed out all the expense money to that native, huh? For pulling us out, huh? I did pay more than I thought I'd have to. He wanted a dollar, but I finally made him take 75 cents. 75 cents? And all those mules? Yeah. Well, uh, everything okay? Everything, except this. Joe, I just want to know one thing. Where did you happen to pick up that language to talk to those guys, huh? Huh? Oh, well, uh... Oh, yeah. I used to work for a fellow in New York that did quite a bit of export business with India. And I just sort of picked it up, that's all. Why? I was just wondering. Well, let's start climbing in. You sure that stuff on the wheels won't make any difference? No, I don't think so, Joe. Climb in, Ed. It seems funny to me that we didn't have a swarm of those natives around here by this time. Gee, Vic, these fellows here see ships like this land all the time. They just thought it was another passenger plane. But they were sure scared when I told them we was mired down in that asphalt bed. But they say that pitch preserves everything well. All right, cut out the gloomy chatter and close that door. 
I was just telling you what they told me. Well, I'll turn her a little. Then we'll nose right down that clearing. We're lucky there's a full moon or we would have never been able to take off at night. If it hadn't been for that full moon, we might have landed right in the middle of that lake. The moon on that pool of water was about all that kept me away from there. Okay, here we go. Better keep that radio on, Baker. I might be hearing from headquarters. We haven't told them about that smoke yet. We'll wait until we get a little altitude. Then you can talk to them yourself, Morgan. Let's see, we head almost straight southeast, is that right? That's what the chart shows. You'll have to come out right here, you see? I thought there was a radio beam all the way down there. Yeah, that's right. Where is it, Baker? We're completely off of it. Lost it in making that forced landing. We ought to pick it up shortly. Is that field of yours right on Cape St. Roque? Yeah, it's a little to the north. Lies between the mountains and the coast. But the beam will take you right in, so you don't have to worry about that. T.S. calling VM. T.S. calling VM. Okay, T.S. This is VM. Go ahead. Everything okay, VM. All okay. Fire was false alarm. Landed on Trinidad, but we're up again. Uh, headed for the Cape. Ann Burton was stored away in the luggage compartment. Suspected that when she failed to arrive in Springfield with rest of party. Under no circumstances permitted to communicate with friends here. I'll send her back on a tramp steamer without a radio. That'll take a month at least. Good, Morgan. But here's something that's not so good. Party known as Zeb, seen in Springfield in company with Radio Inspector Morris. Unable to trace whereabouts, will keep you informed. That's all. Did you hear that, Joe? Sure I heard it. That ain't anything to make you get white as a sheet, is it? No, I'm just nervous. But that Zeb is a hard guy to fool. And you don't think you can fool Zeb Abercrombie very long, huh? Aber Abercrombie, huh? Say, Joe, how did you happen to know his name was Abercrombie? Oh, I don't know. Maybe he told me himself when we yes. were... That name, Zeb Abercrombie. I knew someone by that name somewhere when I was just a little tight. It seems that he's someone I knew real well. Zeb Abercrombie. Once more, the name Zeb Abercrombie strikes fear into the heart of the gangster Vic Morgan. Can it be that there is an unpaid debt of the jungle that remains to be cleared? And what can Anne know of this gruff old prospector? We can look forward to plenty of thrills and nerve-tingling suspense in the next episode of Anne of the Airlines. <laughs>